and hello to you guys as well. Hello. How are you? How are you? I'm good. It's great to meet the brains behind such a great show, I've got to say. So congratulations on the second series. Love the first one. How did you react when you heard that you'd actually got the green light for se for season two? First excitement, then <laughs> panic. A mixture of excitement <laughs> and dread. <laughs> because sure the, it was in that order. Yeah, well, it was, uh, you know, it's such a complicated uh, puzzle box to make where you have to tell um, all of these stories. Everybody gets their own story that you, that has an emotional uh, hook to it that you really care about, that you start thinking about the character one way and then you end thinking about them another way and then hopefully you empathize with them by the end. But that's on top of telling a compelling murder mystery that's also funny and every episode has to feel like a totally different, unique genre. Putting all those things together is such a massive task to figure out. It's very, very complicated, but I think people appreciate uh, the level of difficulty. Um, Anthony, when you joined the show, um, I think perhaps this was the first time you, you'd worked with these two. What was it like joining an established double act? <laughs> <laughs> I just tossed the balls for them to juggle. <laughs> I'm the guy on the outside. Uh, no, it, it, was, uh, it, it was incredible because this, with a, I think the thing that I really, on the first season, felt the most is how uh, Chris and Phil are really unwilling to let OK skate by. They want it to be as good as it can possibly be, and they're willing to keep working on everything, every aspect of everything, uh, until it is, or you run out of time, one or the other. <laughs> uh, and so that that willingness and that freedom and the uh, desire to, to pull ideas and collaboration from everyone uh, really um, set a tone that I think is felt in both seasons. Chris and Phil, I mean, you two are such powerhouses and you've made so many films and shows in so many different styles. Is, just there look a, at a particular, is there a particular genre that you haven't touched yet that you'd really like to have a go at? Um, you know, there are still many, many more. Believe it or not, you think that after these two, uh, that we would have we'd be running dry of uh, <laughs> of different types of uh, ways of telling stories. But there's so many different ways to tell a story in the world. Um, there's a bunch that we haven't done, but you know, I think we're yeah. also sort of frustrated heist film filmmakers. That's right. We find ways. To, to put a heist, it into every to put a heist, a heist in everything. Yeah. I'd love to see a Lord and Miller heist. That well, sounds episode <laughs> episode five Get of ready. the season. <laughs> Get ready. Also, the Lego Movie. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I I believe the show was originally designed to be a film, and then you decided to turn it into a show. Why was that? Well, uh, yeah, the first uh, the first series was. Uh, a originally a script for a film um, and uh, when I went when the the good people at, uh, at TriStar uh, were like hey whatever happened to that film that we bought you know 10 years ago and you never made would you like to make it now uh, when I looked at the script I was like oh this needs a lot of work and a real problem with it was it was sort of episodic because there are different chapters being told by different people and I'm like well in the time since the film was written and now with the rise of, you know, premium streaming television, uh, this actually would work better as, uh, as a series where you could have each episode be its own version of the, of the events. And we could either make it less episodic or, or maybe it's episodic. good that it's episodic. <laughs> exactly. Maybe this isn't a problem. Maybe this is an advantage. And yeah. so I think it's really its best self as a, as a series. Uh, and it allows every episode to be, you know, to see the world through someone else's eyes and to learn to empathize with them. One thing that really intrigued me was right at the end, and I mean after the credits, that coat of arms that you've got. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Where did the idea yeah, come yeah. from for that? Well, it's not from us. It's from Lord Lou Miller. That's right. Who's our benefactor. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Lord Miller. Yeah. Yes. The, the name Lord Miller sounds like uh, a really uh, a posh person that... Uh, uh, that it is vaguely inspired by Lord Lou Grade. Yes. Who, the uh, producer of the Muppets. Muppets. 
and member of the House of Lords. That's right. So uh, that's where I came from. So we're like, well, this character of Lord Miller really needs his own uh, coat of arms. Uh, and so that's where that came from. Be rude not to, really. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, it's been lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. And like I say, really enjoyed the show as well. So thanks for that. Thank so, you so much. Thank you, Frida. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, hey you guys. <laughs> hey you guys. <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys. Hey you guys.